Hey, Stevie. Hey there, Dustin. How you doing? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing there, buddy? I'm doing much better than I was before. I can tell you that much. Yeah, that's right. You were sick last week. Super sick. I'm sorry, man. It happens. Uh, Dustin, I got a fantastic looking picture from you. Um, where are you right now? Because you are not at home. You're in a magenta room. This is where we uh, we come to meditate once a year in the magenta room. Now, uh, we are taking <laughs> wedding photo hangover on the road. Uh, we are currently going international with this podcast. Uh, my wife and I were photographing a wedding in the beautiful upstate New York in Buffalo. That's New in the United States of America, actually, Dustin. I, I don't know if you knew that. I'm setting up the story, Stephen. Bear oh. with me. <laughs> context, Stephen. Context. <laughs> I don't just... F- I'm sorry, Dustin. Last week, you had it way too easy. Anyways, we are currently in Niagara Falls, Canada, because we have two weddings in New York. And so we thought, hey, while we're in New York, we should come up with our daughter and make a little family vacation out of it. And uh, yeah, I'm currently sitting right next to the falls, actually. So if you guys hear some some water, some rumbles in the background of my audio, uh, I'm kind of bootstrapping this one a little bit and um, sitting next to the falls talking to talking to you guys well you know what for all of our live listeners out there um if enough of you comment and like the live feed uh dustin actually said he would jump off the falls in a speed yeah. this is true this is true i actually so my uh in-laws are here on this trip with us and uh they have a zip line that goes from one end of the falls to the other <laughs> and we did a indoor water park today and so we were kind of walking around and then we realized my mother-in-law was actually walking around with her swimsuit in her hand still because it was wet wait so she's completely naked and so i offered to pay for her to do the zip line if she did it in her swimsuit <laughs> Because oh, I, ch- and then I said, I, but the caveat was she had to tell the person as she was getting on the zip line, I'm putting, I'm doing this in my swimsuit because if the line breaks, I want to be in my swimsuit in case I get wet. <laughs> <laughs> I know oh. that, I know it's not that funny, but it's really one of those you had to be there because here in upstate Canada, wherever the hell we are, uh, downstate actually, right? Actually down province, d- d- down province, New York. <laughs> Uh, it's like 40 degrees no, outside no, and very cold. Down, you don't say down province, New York. You're in Canada right now, Dustin. Uh, the other oh, funny thing is my in-laws are very ignorant about all things uh, international. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to shit talk your in-laws on the podcast? Do they listen? Uh, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Corinne's parents. You, you, you can. We can talk about them all we want because I told them today that I had to re- record this podcast, and they didn't know what a podcast was. They thought I was being interviewed on the radio. Is how my wife explained it to them. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what it basically is. It's a, uh, it's radio for the internet. Radio for the interwebs, but um, yeah. They, uh, they. This is the first time they've left America, so it's been Ever? been pretty entertaining. When we went over the border, and they've been pointing out things like, "Oh, the, they have WalMarts here," and "Oh, that that McDonald's looks just like our McDonald's," and just ridiculous things like that. So it's it's made my internal laughter just the best. So I'm oh, probably gonna crack at some point. But Tim Hortons, it's just like our Tim Hortons, eh? I had to explain right. exchange rates to them yesterday, so that was pretty fun. Doesn't I heard last week that you do so so many great accents uh, from Michaela? Um, so I was just curious: have you busted out your Canadian accent while you're in Canada? Uh, I haven't busted out my Canadian accent, however. Um, I've been trying to perfect my French accent while I've been here because there are a lot of people coming from other places in Canada to Niagara Falls and they have a super thick French Canadian accent. So So they're coming from Quebec. Yes, I'm working. I've been working on my Quebec accent and no, you are not going to hear it tonight on the podcast. (laughs) Mm, Dustin, 
the listeners are just wanting that so bad. Oh, I'm sure that they are Gotta just give jonesing it for it. G- give us a taste. Give us a tease. Oh, Steve, what do you, I saw a little brown bottle in that hand earlier. What, what's, what's going down the throat of Steven Van Elk tonight other than... Yep. Well, it, oh. Dustin, before I got terribly sick, Jen and I went on a lovely little vacation. We had a weekend off from shooting weddings. Stop. Uh, we drove to Chicago, Illinois, one of the greatest cities in the United one of the greatest cities in the world let's just say it um and on our way there we stopped at a liquor store and i bought some dogfish head pumpkin ale because i love dogfish head and i'd never had their pumpkin ale before yeah and that's p-u-n-k-i-n also on the way there dustin we stopped at three floyd's brewery here uh in in indiana it's an it's a great indiana brewery uh that serves great indiana beer for great indiana men like me okay let's back it up a second though did you like that that pumpkin it's beer do- oh it's so good so so good i find that it, it kind of varies for me season to season like year to year mm. no no, uh, no are you talking about pumpkin beers in general or are you talking about the dogfish head pumpkin ale? the dogfish one nah you're wrong dude dogfish head is so consistent with all their beers I just, well, I guess I wasn't, I liked it two years ago, but I wasn't a huge fan, uh, last year. Um, and I have, I have yet to try it this year. So. Dustin. So while two weeks ago you were shooting a wedding, do you want to know what I was doing? Uh, not shooting a wedding. Oh yeah. It's so, so good. Just palling around Chicago with my best pal, my wife, Jennifer Van Alk. We went up on top of the Roby Hotel to the Up and Up Bar. Uh, it's like a 12-story, 13-story hotel. And between that hotel in downtown Chicago, all of the buildings are only allowed to be four stories tall. So it is the best view of downtown Chicago I have ever seen. You got to go there next time you're in Chicago, buddy. Yeah, well, hopefully... Uh... I will land this holiday party that I'm trying to get to photograph and you and I can go and shoot that. We could stay at the hotel together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, assuming that they could put bunk beds into one of the rooms for us, because that is my only condition when I shoot with you is that if we stay at a hotel, it has to have bunk beds. Okay. And I call top bunk. We didn't have bump get bump get. I can't speak. Bunk beds when we shot in uh, Sierra Leone. Um, that was a different situation. Uh, <laughs> but I'll I put that in the rider for the next time we go back. Forgot to, Africa. to put that in the rider before then. Yeah. Um, you know, I just I figure as the podcast grows and we get you know more well known that I want to make sure I got a lot of crazy shit in my rider. Bunk beds. <laughs> And I have to share a room with Dustin so he can listen to me snore. There you go. You heard it here first. Steve is a fan of not only bunk beds, but sleeping with Dustin. Mm -hmm. You know, Uh, buddy. All right. So as I kind of hinted uh, in last week's episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Yeah. Yeah, Steve. You're like the Segway king, Dustin. How did you not transition that with like a speaking of sleeping with me? And then on to the next thing. Speaking of... S- You're losing your magic. Leaping with me would be a terrible transition for what I was about to say. Yeah, I want to hear it. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's start it over again. You start with speaking of sleeping with me. Let's go. <laughs> no. I am a happily married speaking man and I will not Speaking of sleeping with Dustin, <laughs> go. Um, last week, I kind of hinted to the listeners when I was talking to Michaela that um which by the way i would love your feedback on what you guys thought of our first uh kind of official i know we brought jen on um but that was a three-way and (laughs) curious to see what you guys think of uh how that married man dustin oh my gosh you should be ashamed of yourself (laughs) but um we hinted at how we were gonna just blow your minds this week with a little ditty on how I don't, Steve. Have you had a chance to play with this at all? 
Um, Dustin, you really need to be specific about what you're talking about because we do a lot of dick jokes and a lot of like sexual jokes on this show and you cannot just be like, Steve, have you had a chance to play with this at all? What I am referring to here, Stephen, is the application in which I sent you uh, that I've been using to up my Instagram game, so to speak, Uh, because as we've talked about in earlier episodes, I am very lazy when it comes to posting to Instagram (laughs) from my phone and I'm constantly searching for a way to do it from my desktop or my laptop because I hate sending pictures to my phone, posting them and then going and deleting them. So let's go back. Uh, Speaking of sleeping with Dustin (laughs) is always a good thing. (laughs) Speaking of sleeping with Dustin, uh, I have been playing with this new app called Window.io that Dustin recommended to me. And Dustin has also been playing with it. Oh, I've been playing I've been with playing it. with it really all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot put to down. put it on my laptop before I left for this trip. So that's been a little bit disappointing because I was too busy trying to make sure I freaking updated my Adobe Lightroom. Because I've got 50,000 images to call between now and when I get home. Do you not have Wi-Fi right now in Canada? Uh, I bought Wi-Fi in our hotel today just so that I could podcast with you. Because the fancier the hotel you stay in, the more expensive and not free the Wi-Fi is. So you can download that app right now. Come on, get on it. Yeah, I have a lot of shit I need to try and download between now and when we leave this hotel. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we don't need to talk about all the shows that you want to watch that you need to download between now and then. Um, Mostly like My Little Pony, Sophia the First. That's exactly what I want to download. Yeah. Because I downloaded Stranger Things, which I know we're going to talk about later. But it expired on my iPad because it was through Netflix yesterday. (laughs) So I need to re-up my download for that. Oh, yeah, you do. Uh, I've been playing around with Window.io all week. I hate it. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. I'm just not a fan, man. Why not? Because it's, it's, uh, it's using a mobile browser. Yeah. So when you go to upload a photo, um, you can't tag people in the photo through window.io. So you have to upload through window.io, then open up the app in your phone, and now you've defeated the purpose just so that you can tag somebody. Also, you can do a square photo or you can do the original size of the photo, but you can't like crop the photo in window.io. Interesting. It's just super frustrating and annoying. See, I, when I export the photos out of Lightroom, I am cropping them how I want them cropped for Instagram. Oh, gosh. I never do that kind of work. Mm. I mean, it's really easy. You just quickly, you're like calling a wedding or editing a wedding. You're like, oh, this one's kind of cool. Kind of want to throw this on the Insta. I go ahead and I just crop it the way I want it to crop. And then I have a preset export that I have saved. I just click it. It saves it right to a folder on my computer on Dropbox. And then I go to window.whatever.io and... I have it preset to, you know, load up that folder and it's just like loading your camera roll on your phone and I'm in, I'm out and I'm off to play back to work. Actually, it's more Uh, accurate. uh, I mean, I, I understand how window.io could be convenient, but I, I tag people in every, almost every single photo that I upload. Um, Jen and I have an editing company that we run and our editing company that we run edits all of our photos. So I always tag the editing company in the photos when I upload them. Um, so for me, it's just like now I have to jump into the app on my phone to get that done. and It's just frustrating. But, I mean, what can you do? It's basically just a mobile browser on your computer, which is better than nothing. 
Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some limitations, uh, especially like when it comes to hashtagging. Um, so what I've been doing is I post the photo through it and then I have Instagram open in one of my browsers like Chrome or Safari mm -hmm. or whatever. And then I'll add the hashtags in, uh, through there. Uh, this sounds so freaking complicated. Is this why every time you post a photo to the wedding photo hangover Instagram, you always send me a text message and you're like, could you add some hashtags to that for me, please? Yep, Which exactly. Which brings us to our next topic. I do that. Steve teaches Dustin how to Instagram. Go ahead, Steve. Take us on that segue tour. No, I just, uh, when you post photos to Instagram, how do you hashtag? Do you hashtag in the comment that you put underneath the photo, or do you add a new comment? Uh, I typically will post, like, three hashtags when i post the photo just Ooh, like no. the most relevant i think of at the top of my mind like dustin and Crin photography or fort wayne wedding or indianapolis wedding or whatever and then i have like a couple of different you know clipboards full of hashtags that i like that i'm targeting yeah. Ooh, and target. And uh, I wouldn't really say targeting. There's not really any logic that goes into the ones I picked. No, uh, no. You're like bullseye, and you target these things, and you always hit them dead center, right? Uh, yeah, anyways. And then I just copy and paste those bad boys into a comment underneath uh, the photo. And this is where Steve tells me I'm doing it wrong. No, uh, that's actually doing it right. The thing I hate is, uh, so I was reading a study about Instagram a few years ago, and it basically said if you put more than two hashtags in the like original like comment that you put up with the post when you post the post, um, it's a turn off to people. Post the post. End up, post the post. Yeah, post the post. Post the post. Uh, and people will end up not liking your photos. Um, if they see that, because they find it annoying, because they are like, "Oh gosh, he's just throwing a bunch of marketing." Uh, stuff he's just there. advertising. Yeah, son yep. of a bitch. Can't so, believe that. So, uh, th what what I've read and what I've found works in like testing, because I I wanted to see if it was right or not, and so I posted a bunch of stuff with hashtags and everything. And from my experience, I found one to two hashtags in the original post. Typically just one, two kind of feels like you're pushing it, but whatever. And then put a new comment in, put all your hashtags in the new comment underneath. Cool. Is your face okay? It's really twitchy right now. Is my, Canada getting to you? Uh, my uh, coffee is finally kicking in. <laughs> it's a boot time that it's kicking in. Uh, it's, I have the slowest metabolism in the world. <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. I'm glad that uh, everything's working out for you. Dustin, do you tag uh, when you post stuff to Dustin underscore McKibben and it's like professional work, do you tag Dustin and Corinne? Uh, Steven, that would be you assuming that I post professional work on the Dustin underscore McKibben. I mean, I know a lot of people that visit that Instagram account might think, God, I don't know how this guy got started doing child portraiture, but he is so amazing. And the fact that one client hires him all the time to photograph their amazingly beautiful daughter, which spoiler and alert the happens to be my daughter. Uh, cause that's all my Instagram feed is. Um, which is why we are really trying to push and we are really trying to work on our Dustin and Corinne Instagram account, which is our business account, which is where if you go over there and take a peekaboo, you're going to see a lot more pictures of pretty brides and grooms. Dustin, you gotta, you gotta stop working so hard at that Dustin and Corinne account. Dustin McKibben is the name, man. Dustin McKibben is what people are looking for, man. You got to know they're coming for you. Uh, that's where I share things like my vacations, my adventures, my travels. Oh, yeah. That's where you share things so that people can stalk you and murder you with your XLR cable. I heard that's 
last episode I heard that XLR cabling is how you do it. Yep. Yep. That's how that's how they know when I'm out of town so they can break into my house and rob me. <sighs> Dustin, uh, now that you do this podcast with me, you have to be a consummate professional all over the board. All over the board. Mm -hmm. This podcast is the most professional <laughs> podcast in the world. Hash, hashtag hashtag honeypot dick and pot. Dick and pot with egg, that. Eggplant emoji. <laughs> Can we just take a quick second and talk about the awesome listeners out there who have sent you eggplant pictures? Uh, yeah. Um, big shout out to, uh, contest winner, Louie Novak and, uh, friend of the pod, Jack Wood. What a, what a uh, coincidental name there, Jack Wood for sending, for sending Steve a, uh, a how do you say it? Aubergine? Am I saying Aubergine. that? Aubergine. Uh, I mean, you're in Canada. You should know how to say this. Stuff that's, now, I'm right? trying to learn the lingo, Steve. So when I go into the store tomorrow for breakfast and I'm like, I will take a couple slices of your aubergine, please. <laughs> Just I'm a little aubergine on my toast, please. Is this, is this your first time in Canada? <laughs> no, I've been here a few times. You have? I had to come up here to get my fake ID in college. When you turned 18, you came up to Canada so that you could uh, drink? Uh, the mistake I made was when we came up here to get fake IDs, um, I didn't know any addresses so the store or the shop that you bought or you bought your fake ID. You had to have an address th that you knew was real to mm -hmm. put on your ID for that state. And since I didn't know any other addresses, I just got my exact Indiana driver's license just with a different birth date on it not thinking <laughs> when i'd go home to indiana any bartender is going to definitely be able to tell that that's not a real id <laughs> and i never had a fake id dustin it's because you look like you're 80 <laughs> but now i do <laughs> oh steven that's because you uh you lived a rich rich life I, I I drank a few times before I turned twenty one, but uh, I was I was a I was a very very religious when I was in college, very religious. So I didn't drink. Yeah, not even on Sundays with communion. That's that's disappointing. Grape juice, buddy. That's how you get it done. That's extra religious. Oh yeah. A lot of Catholics out there that listen to this episode are going to be like, oh. Steven, sacrilegious son of a bitch. Whoa, 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 I drink wine now. Come on. Oh, my goodness. This could take a whole other turn. Is there any other Instagram teachings that the great Steven Van Elk would like to impart upon us? So we have the, just to recap, we have only two, one to two hashtags because then your, your followers think you're needy. And then you comment all those hashtags to kind of sneak them in like a little honeypot action. You just sneak them in underneath the mat. And then they're yeah. like, oh, I'm not going to check his comments because I only write comments. I don't read them. Uh, who reads your comments? Let's be honest. Uh, before I post any comment, I always read the comments because I want to make sure that my comment is original, Steven, on Instagram. I take that shit seriously. Yeah, tie that XLR cable around your neck. <laughs> For the listeners out there, I was pretending to hang myself. Yes, with an XLR cable. Does, I mean, that's all I got for you. I, I could go on a rant about how much I dislike it when... So ever since Instagram moved away from only square photos, so now you can you know upload photos that are rectangular, <laughs> there are still people out there who upload photos that are rectangular with like white bars on the top and bottom or on the sides i've seen so that, that yeah. it fits in the square and if you're doing that and you listen to this podcast i did that too at first and you gotta stop you've gotta stop it looks so bad when people are looking at your photos because they know those photos could be good looking and could be the full size but then when they like look at your profile it's like there's all these like odd misshapen like things that don't fill up the whole square 
Yeah. It's better to have like a square thumbnail where like your subject is maybe off center because they were in the third on the rectangle and in the square they're kind of cut off or something. Mm -hmm. It's better to have that than it is to have like white bars on the top and bottom. It just looks so bad. Yeah, it just doesn't bother me. I've seen it and I'm like, no, oh, cool, whatever. Oh gosh, no, you're not. Ugh. I know you look at that and you're like, gross, because I know you care about design, Dustin. Don't try to play cool with the listeners, okay? There's only one of us wearing a backwards hat right now. Oh, I care about design a ton uh, and aesthetic and all that stuff. But when it comes to Instagram, it's such a, such a, I don't know what you would say, like a tunnel or a waterfall let's use waterfall because i'm staring at this beautiful waterfall right now at my window it's a waterfall of visual diarrhea <laughs> and to expect everyone to be uniform with it you're never gonna get that no uh, okay this is what i'm saying though the white bars on the top and bottom and on the sides looks as bad to me as when people do collages like because they don't look right when you're scrolling through your feed. So here's what you do, Steve. When you see one of these these people that are doing things that annoy you, you you unfollow them. No, no, no. Screw that. Um, if you're listening <laughs> to the podcast right now and you are on Instagram and you see somebody putting white bars on the top and bottom of their photos or the left and right of their photos, you see somebody doing a collage. I'm going to also throw in, if you see somebody watermarking their photos on Instagram, you get on there and you just... You read them the riot act. You let them know that it just looks bad and it looks terrible and nobody likes it. And it's actually hurting their brand. And then, you know what? Go ahead and at wedding photo hangover when you do that so that we can see that comment. And we'll back you up. Right, Dustin? Absolutely, Steve. Whatever you say. You know what? Go ahead and at wedding photo hangover and also at Dustin underscore McKibben so Dustin can back you up too. I'm all about backing up our listeners, Steve, especially for all the nonsense you send them out into the world to do. Can we talk about what I want to talk about now, which is the thing that's got everyone hard? No, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, first off, I want to talk about what I got this week from a listener of the show. Yes, I'm listening. I received... A, an eggplant. We talked about that. And then prices question mark. <laughs> prices question mark. Yes, if you remember back to the episode where you received a message that said prices question mark. Oh. We told listeners all they had to do was pour beer down my throat, send me an eggplant, a dick pic, an eggplant pic, and uh, then say prices question mark, and I would work with them. And a lovely listener of the show sent that to me. <laughs> Are it we naming was, uh, this listener? Can we oh, can we congratulate uh, this listener? It was Mr. Evan Dawson. Evan Dawson, you are now a VIP fan of this show. <laughs> oh, you're right up there with Mr. Louis Novak and Mr. <laughs> Jack Wood. <laughs> Jack Wood, what a name. Why are you alienating our listeners? He's one of our best listeners. He took the time to send us a photo. I know. And for that, I will be forever grateful. He's pretty awesome, too. He listens to us uh, while he's welding. I know. Like, he could seriously damage himself when he's laughing so hard at probably your jokes, let's be honest. Uh, but he still listens. Jack, if you are still listening to this podcast... After Dustin's been such a piece of shit to you. I would love to get your feedback on what you thought of Michaela being on last week <laughs> instead of Stephen. <laughs> Dustin's seriously thinking about switching up the host. <laughs> no, I could never live without you, Stephen. Oh, Dustin, you too sweet. Then I would buddy. have to edit all the audio myself. So speaking of things that Dustin can't live without... Am I doing all right? Let's 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 go ahead and move on to a Dustin topic. Yes, finally. The topic I wanted to talk about with Michaela, but she doesn't care about anything gear related. Let's talk about that new Sony camera, the A7R3. Dun, dun, dun. It's making Dustin want to switch to Sony even more. This is all in the show notes. I'm just reading it. 
Oh, uh, Steve, I've got this shit memorized. This camera's been on my brain all week long. So Sony, uh, I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago, Steve and I were talking about how Sony was going to drop an A7S 3 or A9S, whatever they're going to call it. And I'm sure they still will, um, but then ended up not dropping it. And then out of nowhere they in really China, they the made ball a ball on that. What? Just uh, being an idiot. Just being an yeah, idiot. Just being okay. It. So out of nowhere, they just dropped this bomb on us with this A7R3, uh, which no one expected because the A7R2 is only two years old, and they didn't really see the need for a replacement for that because the A9 was sort of their photo camera. Um, so the A7R series is sort of their high-end DSLR photography line and they thought that that was kind of getting replaced with the A9 and they just mm -hmm. came out of left field and were like no suckas we're going to drop this A7R3 which I think I the A7S was supposed to be the photo line and the A7R was supposed to be the video line this is where you're uneducated Steve and that's okay I forgive you for that because I've been studying Sony like none other Mm -hmm. uh, the R line is their high resolution photography line. So it's their oh, high megapixel yeah. um, line. So like 40 megapixel cameras. The R3 is actually the same sensor that's in the R2, uh, but they have they've implemented the brand new processor that they've came out with with the A9. Um, so they are two different sensors, but apparently with this new pro, we're getting real nerdy and geeky now. With this new processor, it's able to just improve the performance so much that uh, it it's gonna just blow things away. Um, do you want to go through some of the text, the specs that I'm sure you just read online, and then I can talk about some of the things that I'm excited about. Some of the things I was excited about when I was reading about this online was that it's going to have a bigger battery. They, the Sony A7 cameras, the A7R and the A7S, their battery life is terrible. And the A9 has a better battery life. And the bigger battery that is in the A7R3 is actually the battery from the A9. Correct. It now uh, is capable of fitting in the a7r3 and runs in that so you get longer uh, life on your batteries um there's also lower read noise or when you're shooting in low light situations and stuff like that that'll be beneficial and uh it's a uh, two times faster autofocus which is awesome and then the movie record button is in an easier to push location because that is one of the things that's the most frustrating about Sony is how difficult it is to start shooting video with it. Yeah, and that's actually one thing I didn't know. So I'm kind of excited about that too. I'm going to have to look more into that. Um, that's why I assumed this was the video one and not the uh, photo one. No, see, that's like the crazy thing with Sony is is they never expected when they launched the A7 line, they never really expected for it to take off the way it did into the video space. I mean, they, they kind of geared it towards, because it's a mirrorless system, they geared it towards being very effective for video. And then I think once they realized the video potential is when they branched the A7 line into three separate categories with the R line being specifically for photography and the S line being specifically for video. And, and it's sort of with the A7S II with the high ISO capabilities has just been a videographer's dream because you can literally shoot in pitch black scenarios. Um, without much uh, noise in the image. And some of the complaints that a lot of videographers have had when the A9 came out, not only with the price tag, um, was just some of the limitations that they put on the camera from a video perspective. Uh, the highlights are were getting clipped crazy compared to both the A7S and the A7R. Mm. And they didn't even include S log with the a nine, which I knew a lot of people were upset about, um, the, not having the ability to shoot in log, which gives you that super flat profile that lets, allows you to bring back a lot of that dynamic range. 
So with all that being said, I know m most of the people I know that shoot Sony are going to be shedding um, all of their bodies. This sounded kind of dirty. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> shedding all their bodies just like the cicadas that they are. Why do you work with so many insects? This is weird. And uh, they're going to be picking up the a7s nope sorry a7r3 uh, so a couple fun features um, are the touchscreen uh, capabilities that it didn't originally have it has the like steve said the bigger batteries and just to give you kind of an idea of frame of reference on that so the average videographer shoots with about i would say somewhere around six to eight batteries I haven't shot photo on Sony yet, only video, so I can only attest to that. Um, six to eight batteries for a wedding. And apparently it's supposed to be a, somewhere around like a two times to two and a half times uh, capability. So if you're using eight batteries, you should only need to use like somewhere around like three, maybe four. Mm -hmm. If like you're, I mean, just to be safe. Um, but the other crazy thing about this camera is it hasn't gotten any bigger. So I like that you just screwed up basic math, and I was just like, mm-hmm, and I just let you get away with it. So It's okay. What, what, what did I do wrong? Like two? Three or, I mean, four? <laughs> well, it just depends on how much you shoot. I'm picturing having a battery pack on it that already fits two batteries. And then you would only maybe need to switch it out one other time. But eight divided by two and a half, what does that equal? Eight divided by two and a half would be like four and a half, five, somewhere in there. <laughs> oh, what the hell? We're just going to move on from this. Oh my gosh. Eight divided by two is four. Why, why would eight divided by two and a half be four or five? What? Jiminy Christmas, Dustin. Oh my gosh. Okay, Dustin doesn't understand math. We're going to move on. Uh, you don't need math to be a professional photographer, as Dustin is clearly showing. Um, USB 3.1 with USB-C connector for tethering and charging on the A7R3. Are you excited at all for that? Because that sounds pretty good. Yeah, 3.2, not yeah, 4 or 3. 5. Yeah, 3.2. Yeah. So that's what I said, 3 or 4 batteries. Yeah. I just don't think anybody's actually using 8. Um, so I just figured your whole thing was bullshit to begin with. But anyway... <laughs> So the camera size hasn't hasn't changed at all, which I think is incredible from an engineering standpoint that they're fitting a bigger battery and now it's going to have two SD card slot readers or writers or whatever. Ooh, now that's that's the magic right there, two SD card slots. Because that's been one thing that a lot of people are like, oh, I like having two SD cards. You know, like you guys, for example, you shoot to two cards in case anything uh, goes no, no, wrong. No, 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 Dustin, I want, I want to go back on that. Um, professional photographers, not just Jen and I, professional photographers want to have two card slots so that they can dual write to two separate cards. You know how often I get onto Facebook groups, because we're not going to name the Facebook group I get on most often for fear that I would get kicked out. <laughs> for making fun of people on this podcast about it. Um, and on Facebook groups, people complain on nearly like an every other day basis that I had a card that went bad at a wedding. How can I get my photos back? If they'd been dual writing, they wouldn't have that problem. Exactly. So, yes. Because professionals dual write, Dustin. Yeah. Do what, you not dual write? No, we do not dual write. What? So, what? anyways, back to Oh my to gosh, ladies Sony and gentlemen, Steve Van Elk here with breaking news. Dustin is actually an amateur photographer. Oh gosh, you all have been listening to this thinking Dustin was a pro, giving you the best advice possible. And now I hate to tell you the bitter truth. Dustin, I'm going to shame you every single day until you start dual writing. This is utterly ridiculous. Yeah, we don't do all right because we don't need to. No, you do need to, Dustin. Nope. You do. Have you ever had a card corrupt? Nope. 
oh my gosh, your life is a ticking time bomb. It is good. Your, your business is just going to blow the fuck up in front of you one of these days. I'm sorry to curse like that, but this is how passionate I am about this. You're making no, a huge we, mistake. We, I don't know. It's, I'm not going to explain it on this episode, but we'll talk about it on a future episode. You'll explain why you take terrible risks with your business because you apparently don't give a shit about whether or not it succeeds. Uh, you could put it that way. Dual writing is like buying insurance. Yeah. Do you have insurance for your business? Yes. Why don't you dual write? Uh, cause I don't need to. <laughs> You do need to. This is the most frustrating conversation I've ever had with you. I've never had a card go bad, and I never will, because we buy the most top-of-the-line cards, and... Every week on Facebook groups, people say, I bought the most top-of-the-line cards I could find. Yeah, but there's also also other things that people do that they make cards go bad that they don't even realize they're doing. And these are things we don't do. Um, certain things are, for example, deleting uh, photos throughout a wedding. Yeah. That's everybody sh- knows you don't delete photos. I don't delete photos during a wedding day. That's the number one reason why cards go bad. Um, the second reason is people pull cards out of their camera when their cameras are still on or they change the battery in their camera while their camera is still on these are all things that cause a card to go bad these are all things that i do not do you know what else could cause a card to go bad a card just going bad dustin you don't know when it's going to happen or why i'm so frustrated right now you got off so so easy last week with Michaela on the podcast. I see that. <laughs> I see, it's like I feel like Steve just put on his daddy pants, and he's like, I feel like I'm being lectured. You need to be lectured. You are making a grave mistake with your business and with your life. I'm trying to help you. I'm here to help you. I'm I'm helper man Steve. That's my new name. I just made it up. It's pretty cool. I know. Yeah. Well, you can help me by dropping $3,200 on this brand new Sony A7R3. Uh, For those listeners out there who might have been interested in the A9, we'll be happy to know that the A7R3 is over $1,000 cheaper. And from everything I read and have looked at, sounds like it's going to stand up to be a better camera, in my humble opinion. DJ D Mac attack because you don't deserve to have your real name said anymore. Uh, what what size cards do you shoot with? We shoot with uh, either sixty five gig, sixty four gig cards, or one hundred twenty eight gig cards. And they're all SD cards, right? Yep. Well, our D four shoots on a CF card. Yeah, but that only shoots to one card, right? It doesn't shoot to two. It does shoot to two, but oh, it does. but Fancy. the other card slot is a sony SD. xqd card uh which uh, just sell that thing you don't need that x yeah. so we have Get a couple of, of those floating around somewhere but we ran into trouble with the card readers on those and so we gave up on them completely um hey dustin hey steve uh go ahead and just uh are you on your... Do you have your phone on you right now? Uh, yes, but I'm in another country, Steve. Yeah. Um, Dustin, for the small price of $66, you could buy a second 128 gigabyte SD card to pop in your little camera and then just be safe on a wedding day. Yes, I have many of those memory cards, Steven. Do you like... This is just a small... Gosh. Well, this is kind of half empty, but... Look at all these beauties. So, I am so angry right now. So incredibly. Whoa. What are those micro SD cards doing in your card case? Dustin was just holding up a card case to show me. Uh, those are for our audio recorders and our drones. Your task amps? Yep. Okay. okay. Speaking of uh, 
cameras that take micro SD. You also wanted to talk about this Sony RX Zero. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about that at this time. I just was listening to a podcast last night that was talking about how they what were. What podcast was that? Doesn't come on. People want to know. What yeah. You are Shout into. out to the wedding videography. Let me just look at it here because. I don't want to, I don't want to get it wrong, Stephen, and I don't want, you know. Oh, this this podcast is so important to Dustin's life that he can't even remember the name of it. Wedding Wedding Film Academy podcast. Well, there's so many and they all have slightly different names and some are much better than others. So it's the Wedding Film Academy podcast uh mm-hmm. done by Jordan Bunch. He's a wedding videographer out of Texas. And uh, he interviews different wedding videographers each week and does a pretty bang up job, if I must say so myself. So who bang up jobbed you into thinking about this Sony RX Zero? So who, he was he was interviewing Garrett um, from Inamics, who is a great Indiana man. Yeah, uh, Inamics. That's an Indianapolis company, right? Yeah, well, yes and no. So you got banged uh, up by an indie company. The bulk of their weddings in Indianapolis, but they're from Evansville. Ugh, yuck. Yeah, talk about a hike each weekend. But, um... Yeah, so he's a Sony ambassador. Uh, so, yeah. So he's For like the record, my... I was saying, ooh, yuck, to driving from Evansville to Indy every weekend, not to Evansville, which is a great city. Correct. I just, I didn't want people to think I just hate every city that you bring up. Nope, just Fort Wayne. Yeah, just that one. <laughs> Fort Wayne's all right. But, they uh... got a great zoo. Sh- I posted a picture of your butt from that zoo on our, uh, on our Instagrams. Yeah, it's a good zoo. Anyone out there looking for the most top nationally ranked zoo in the country, Fort Wayne is on there. So let's talk about this RX Zero, this uh, expensive GoPro. Uh, I wasn't done really talking about the A7R, but that's okay. But I was so bored with it. Yeah. So bored. Well, we didn't really, I mean, we kind of talked a little bit about the video aspect of it, Steve. Are are you going to switch over? I'm so tempted. I'm so like, why are you tempted? Three it, bullet points. Let's go right now. Boom, boom, boom. Lighter, faster, and it's pretty. Harder, better, faster, stronger. No? Yeah, pretty much. Do you even know what I was re- Do you even know what I was referencing there? I don't know. It's like it's like a new car. You drive the same car for we've been shooting Nikon for 10 years. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm like, I might be interested in a little change. Do you even know what I was referencing there? Uh, some song that I don't really but, care but, about. But whose song? There's two different artists you can name, and I would accept either answer. Uh, I can't tell you, Steve. We've we've discussed this at length that I know nothing about music. Daft Punk, Dustin, or the Kanye song where he samples Daft Punk. Sorry, Steve. Oh gosh. Kanye. How do you not know that it's a Kanye? Because, well, you millennials are listening to music. I'm listening to audiobooks and podcasts to try and further educate myself on my craft. I don't don't listen to Dustin's lies on this podcast. As the editor, I can tell you he only just recently started listening to podcasts when we started doing a podcast and he realized they were a thing. After pressuring me for months on end to do a podcast with him. But now that I know that they are a thing, I am devouring them at length. <laughs> I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Okay, so uh, lighter, faster. Lighter, faster. The autofocus is supposed to be amazing. Um, 2x faster. That's that's a big improvement. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm definitely renting it when it comes, when it drops. That's for, for certain. And if we can... If I can convince the wife. Are uh, you going to sell your Nikon glass or are you just going to buy some uh, Metabones adapters or like speed boosters or what What are you thinking? I'm thinking of offloading all the Nikon stuff and just going all Sony. Because you already want to go, you, I mean, you already have a bunch of Sony cameras for your video stuff, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, we already have like a complete Sony setup for video. Um, so it only makes sense that this camera is 
the perfect hybrid for both. Um, so if I can get a good price for my Nikon stuff, I think it could be, I mean, plus it kind of came at a good time where I, I know about it and it gives me time to offload over the holidays, over the winter, and then pick it up at the beginning of wedding season next year. So over this holiday season, uh, check our Patreon or something to uh, buy Dustin's camera gear. Is that, is that how we're going to do this? or Maybe. Just eBay? I, I, just I still eBay? need to give it a little bit more thought. I still need to get the camera in my hands and shoot some photos with it and just kind of sp- and kind of play with it. Um, because shooting video with something and shooting photos with something is, is a different different game. Oh, so different. So, so different. Especially going from a, a viewfinder to an, o- an OLED viewfinder. So I shoot almost entirely on Canon. Uh, every once in a while, I shoot on Sony. And when Dustin and I went to Sierra Leone, we only took his Nikon cameras with us. And I was shooting video the whole time on his Nikon cameras. And then every time I wanted to take a photo that was like just something I saw that I wanted to capture, I would take my iPhone out to take a photo. Because <laughs> I was just like, uh, I barely know how to use this Nikon. I'm, I'm really just pushing my limits as it is with the video. Sounds about right. I mean, I, I I could have I could have dialed everything in. I would not have been that difficult. But it's just so much faster to take my iPhone out. Something else, uh, just while I'm thinking about it, in case any of our listeners care about this Sony shit, which I'm sure most of them don't, but I want to put this out there just in case Steve didn't know about it. Um, it has 15 stops of dynamic range, uh, which is more than any other other cameras. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then on top of that, I think it's like two or three more stops of stabilization. And this is when you're shooting uh, raw photos, right? This is not for shooting video, the 15 stops of dynamic range. I think it's photo, no, 15 stops is for video. What? Yeah. I thought you said this wasn't a good video camera. I never oh, said it wasn't a, a good video the camera. A7Rs a f- aren't made for video, it's the A7Ss. Uh, that I was talking about their previous lines. This what, mm. That's why I said earlier, this camera kind of breaks that mold. It's a mold breaker. It's like Sony just came in and they were like, I know you guys all wanted that A7S III, but we're going to drop the R and you're not going to hate us. Oh, did you also know, fun fact, that Nikon was unseated at the table this year by Sony uh, for most full frame cameras sold. Sony is now second. Whoa. Canon's still first? Canon's first and Sony second, and now Nikon is third. Wow. Um, so, so yeah. do you want to talk about the Sony RX0 at all? Uh, I don't really know too much about it other than it's sort of like Steve said earlier to me, it kind of compared it to like a GoPro. And I mean, it does at all first sort of glances sort of look and feel like a GoPro. Um, but it definitely produces a more professional, uh, video file. Um, it shoots an S log. So it kind of, I mean, I know this podcast is more photo related, but it's, it's kind of more of a video camera, I think, than it, it is a stills. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I definitely have my eye on it. I think it might be kind of a fun thing to get and play with if I see a job that we have come down the pipeline that would uh, benefit from it. Okay. Uh, real quick bullet point. Why would you want the Sony RX0 over a GoPro? GoPros are cheaper. And they have better frame rate as far as uh, speed and everything goes. I, to be honest with you, I don't know too much about the newest iteration of GoPro. Um, I had actually considered buying one of those as well this year. Uh, But then one of the shooters I had hired had one, so I didn't have to. Uh, And then we ended up not using it at all. So, but the reason I would buy it personally over a GoPro is because we shoot everything on Sony or at least try to for a wedding um, or anything. So tr- keeping the ecosystem consistent with the way uh, mm-hmm. things look is kind of important to me. And 
Yeah, it shoots an S log, and we have been shooting recently in all S log. So I think that is super important, especially for a dark Catholic church. And it's got that Carl Zeiss glass, which uh, a lot of people hear Carl Zeiss and they probably just think I've had a bunch of really crappy cameras that say they have Carl Zeiss glass because the brand isn't what it used to be. True. I would agree with that. The uh, what? I would agree with that statement. Yeah. But I mean, um, Carl Zeiss is the um, they they brought Carl Zeiss on um, when they were making the lenses to shoot photo and video uh when they went to the moon um he has a series of lenses that shoot at f.7 that's f 0.7 um uh notably stanley kubrick was able to get some of the or i think it was two of the lenses stanley kubrick was able to get his hands on and he um shot the movie barry linden with uh one of those lenses Barry Lyndon is uh, shot like almost entirely inside all by like candlelight. And um, I actually read like back in 2013, some uh, company bought the uh, lenses that Stanley Kubrick used for Barry Lyndon. And they were letting people rent out the lenses for their own video projects. But I mean, that's just like a random tangent on the subject of Carl Zeiss. And, you know, probably not super important for this new Sony RX Zero. But I just love that story. Uh, I mean, so the not to shit on your story because I don't really care. Um, oh but man, the, you don't love Kubrick? Come on, Dustin. One of the big applications for this camera that people are talking about using it for is a lot of uh, 360 or 180 video photo Ooh, things, cool. where you'll you know mount them on something and take a photo and be able to use them for web web use and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But anyways, uh, not to fall behind on this episode, but Steve, you mentioned that you might have an opinion on why people love fall. Oh yeah. I just wanted to touch up on that because last episode you and Michaela were trying to figure out why it was that people love fall. And Michaela was just like, I like being comfy. I like being cozy. It's like the perfect weather for comfiness. Yeah. And boring. Coziness. Boring. Yeah. Um, and I forget what your reason was for that. Did you have a reason at all for why people love fall? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I was deferring to my co-host of, of the time. Well, uh, Dustin, I just, uh, I need to just get this out there because so many people don't understand why they like fall. Um, everything's dying in fall. And as you watch everything around the world die around you, you're reminded of how great it is to be alive. And that's why you love fall so much, Dustin. Has somebody been listening to a little Jim Gaffigan, Stephen? No. Oh, he does, a whole, he does a whole bit that? on fall and how... When his family oh drags gosh, him up to like Maine the and they're driving, driving down the road, they're like, it's just so beautiful. Our colors, our colors are so beautiful. And he's like, your trees are literally dying. <laughs> and you're celebrating that. Well, it's just the leaves that are dying, not the actual trees themselves. But that's what I always tell Jen every time we get to fall is that uh, people love it so much because it reminds them that they're still alive, that they have something to live for. Plus, it also puts the fear of death into you as it's getting colder, and like it just feels so good to be alive, Dustin. Mm. Mm. But I think I think what we were talking about, Michaela and I, were not so much why people love fall so much, or at least that's not what I was trying to get at. But I was more trying to get to the bottom of why people want their photo taken in the fall. Because they're alive, the leaves are dead behind them, they look so alive. Uh, Let's not use the word dead, let's use the word dying. It's like that photo you posted to our Instagram of the bride and groom in front of the zombies. They looked so alive, because the zombies looked so dead behind them. It is a good contrast, you're right. I think that's what, I think the answer is right there. I think it just adds contrast to the photo. Yeah, it's about... It's about looking death square in the face and saying, not today. Not today, photographer. Yeah. So, Dustin, before we, uh, before we move on, um, 
we got some quick questions we Ooh. probably need to hit up. Is it, um, this is for our new sh- segment that's not so new? These are coming straight from uh, Facebook groups. Ooh. All right. You ready? Let's, oh, let's yeah. music, music, please. Jose, thank you. Questions, answers, questions, answers, questions. I'm sorry. Jose's traveling with you and your family? <laughs> Can we go over this a little bit? How do Jose, I get on I Jose's Jose plan? Everywhere. I I want to be brought everywhere. I want to be Jose. I'm well, so jealous of him. If you weren't peeing blood out your butthole last week, I would take oh, you. <laughs> what gross, dude. <laughs> um, so on Facebook, uh, this question was asked. I constantly have trouble with getting accurate skin tones. I have to edit in depth in Lightroom. Should I shift the white balance in camera? Will that help me? No. I shoot in the golden hour and start generally at 5,600 Kelvin. So the question is, to simplify, I do not know how to edit. Please tell me how to edit. (laughs) I do not understand What? what a raw image means. Please pay for me to go to college. Yeah, Dustin, that is the question. Okay, just making sure we're all on the same page here. Um, I I think we could dig a little deeper on this question. I What she doesn't say is whether she's shooting in JPEG or shooting in RAW. And I think if you're shooting in JPEG, you got to nail. You got to nail that white balance in camera. If you're shooting in RAW, it doesn't matter. This is, two, this is 2000 and motherfucking 17. If you're still shooting in JPEG at this point, uh, I'm sorry. But you, it's almost as bad as me not shooting with two memory cards. I mean, come on. <gasps> I was about to say that and then you said it. Oh my gosh, Dustin, we are on the same page. This is a breakthrough for us in couples council. I mean, our podcast. <laughs> I just figured I would insult myself before you did. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's silly to shoot in JPEG. So I think we can just safely assume no one's doing that. And if you are, please turn I off this podcast. I think we can assume this and... person is shooting in JPEG, though. Because otherwise, why are they having trouble getting the tones right on the skin? I mean, I've had issues with skin tones before. But that has nothing to do with like what color balance I'm shooting at. Um, it's typically more of a color cast issue, um, whether like where you're shooting, something is causing a cast into the skin tones, um, such as like you know a ton of trees with you know c- creating like a green cast in their skin tones and the highlights. Yeah. But. I don't know. That's not really, it's just something you have to be kind of observing when you're shooting and then not shoot it. Yeah. But I mean, you can also take that cast out of the skin tone. Uh, actually, Jen put up a little tutorial on that a little while ago on Ooh. the Bespoke Tone Instagram on how to get rid of that cast that's cost by like cast cost. What the cost of about? cast. Yeah. Yeah, Jen was doing a night shot with a couple that had a yellow umbrella. We talked about that on the podcast because they were How I Met Your Mother fans. Mm -hmm. And the yellow umbrella caused their skin to look very yellow because of the reflection off the yellow umbrella. So she did like a quick little tutorial thing about like, this is how you get rid of the yellow in the skin tones and stuff. Oh, Um, yeah. Bespoke Tone Facebook page. Oh, it wasn't wasn't a video. It's just a little write up. Mm, I don't read. Oh yeah, I'm she sorry, she buddy. should have I, done a video. I promised I wouldn't bring up that you couldn't read on the podcast ever again. I'm really sorry That's about that. Why I ask you to hashtag because I don't know how to write or read. All right, on the on the next question uh, on on Facebook groups, I want a camera that shoots raw, allows me to switch lenses if I'd like, and be pretty lightweight. I was thinking of getting a 24 millimeter for the front. Anyway, what do y'all use for personal shots? I just want something better than a celly. Something my two-year-old could maybe learn on in the future. <laughs> Thinking less than three hundred dollars. <laughs> if I had a, a if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me what camera they should buy, and when I give them my advice, they always are like, "Oh, that's expensive." I'm looking for something around 300, and my advice is always the same. I say, take that three hundred dollars. 
go to your local cell phone shop and just buy the best version of whatever phone you like the most that has the best camera on it because the best camera you have should be the one you have on you mm-hmm so that's why I, I, think, I always I think you're screwing get that up. What Casey Neistat iPhone. says is the camera that's on you is the best camera that you have. Yes, yeah, sorry. The way you said it is right. Yeah. You, you got to get more on that Casey Neistat. Come on, buddy. I don't, I don't I follow I or listen one. to oh my gosh. this. Listen? He's a YouTuber. Yeah, watch. Oh, this is so I, I don't need to. From what I've been told from your wife, I don't need to listen, watch, hear, read Casey Neistat because I'm talking to him right now. Where is he? You, Steve. You are the living embodiment of Casey Neistat. That would be super cool, but it's not true at all. Just, just without a drone and without a hoverboard. So without all of things, <laughs> all, without all of Casey's toys. Correct. Yeah, uh, I mean Casey is half man, half toy. So uh, I don't think I could ever cyborg. Be him. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, half man, half toy, half marathon runner. But whatever. Um, I agree with you though. This question is utterly ridiculous. For less than three hundred dollars, how are you gonna how are you gonna get a camera that you can change lenses on? You can't even buy also an shoots iPhone wrong. for three hundred dollars. Yeah. And this person, I mean, they they clearly have like an iPhone or an Android phone. Just uh, buy one of those three hundred dollar cases where you can get like the uh, lens attachments that yeah, go that's, onto that's your a iPhone. Decent idea. Yeah. And you can shoot raw on your iPhone already. Yeah. The so thing let's... that made me the most angry was something my two year old could learn on in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Are you really gonna have this around for what, like ten years? Because your two year old is not going to be learning on a camera anytime soon. But let's let's so let's let's take the question and make it more broad. So let's assume three hundred dollars is not in the equation. Uh what camera would you recommend to someone outside of an iPhone? Um for them to just start kind of taking pictures with? Uh, I mean, for me as a Canon photographer, I'd, I'd probably look at one of the Rebel uh, series of Canon cameras. Um, but if I'm going more broad, I'd probably say something mirrorless. Uh, what, what's the Sony A6000 like 60, or something? 6500. The 6500 is still pretty expensive. They got the A6000, which I think they're still selling, which is like the first iteration of whatever the 6500 or whatever it is now. Yeah. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, I was going to say the 6500 or the 6300. Um, yeah. Because I've seen some some photos and video produced with those cameras that are just blow my mind. Um, they yeah. have interchangeable lenses, in, in camera stabilization. They're they're pretty amazing, for, and they're the size of a f- really big phone. So, all right, Dustin. Next question. Uh, I offered a free session to someone without rights to the photos. Now they want the photos for free, and I never signed a contract with them because it was a free session, and there's no email stating that they'd have to pay for the photos. What do I do? It's kind of interesting because I had this happen to me once. Um, we had a uh, our first ever Indianapolis wedding that we booked um, as an incentive to get them to book with us. I offered them a free engagement session. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very clear via email, I guess, that the free engagement session was just for the session and did not include anything above and beyond our time to photograph it. So I, I guess I was clear in the email correspondence. But so you got as, a paper trail. As you That's know, with about. clients, even when you're clear with them, they do not remember what half the time what you're giving them, what's going on, anything. Um, so when we got done photographing the engagement session, the mother of the bride was asking, you know, hey, do we get a, you know, her, how she phrased it was funny and really took me off guard. She was like, hey, would you mind if uh, after the engagement session, I just, you threw some of these on uh, my USB drive real quick and like whipped out a USB drive out of her pocket. 
And I was like, whoa, mom. <laughs> I was like, first of all, I have to edit these bad boys. And second of all, uh, this engagement session was a free engagement session. And uh, your daughter and you will not be receiving the digital files. However, you're more than welcome to purchase them through our website. Doesn't one problem I have with this story? Why was this girl marrying her mom? The mom was at the engagement session. Like, yeah, following because she's us marrying around. her daughter. I got that, but. Yeah. Is that legal in Indiana? I don't know. You're from Indianapolis. This was our first Indianapolis wedding. You tell me. You shoot more there than I do. I mean, I personally, I see it all the time. I just assumed it was an accepted societal norm, but you're from Fort Wayne, so I just kind of wanted to push you on this. Um, so then that bride went a, along and just wrote us a beautiful review on our Facebook page, and you can go on there and check it out. Um, <laughs> But it's a lovely review. Like you would read it and you'd be like, wow, they sound like amazing photographers. I want to hire them. And the whole time you're like, why did she leave them a, not a five-star review? And then she ends the review with the only downside I would say is that they gave us a free engagement session and then wouldn't give us the digital files. Yeah, that is, that is one thing that I, I think is super frustrating to most people is like, they don't understand when you say the session's for free that the photos aren't necessarily for free. And you really have to train your clients and you really have to, you got to create that paper trail. Like you had that paper trail with the emails, but this person didn't have a paper trail. And then like, if you're not on the paper trail, like the chances of you dying of dysentery just go straight through the roof. Yeah. And in, I mean, in retrospect, had I known how upset this bride would have been and how upset the mom was going to be, um, I should have just like sold them a disc of the photos, but, uh, I just come off one of, uh, uh, workshop from one of Steve's favorite photographers. Uh, <laughs> I'm editing that right now. <laughs> And, uh, he talks about, you know, like, you know, don't undersell your digital files and all that shit. And so I literally just come from that a couple weeks prior. And so I refused to back down on my price for the digital files and the bride's mom was not willing to pay for them. And so she went on, went on to talk about how upset she was that she couldn't use them for the guest book and save the dates and all that crap. And But would she have been willing to pay for them at any price point? Because in her mind, it was free. So any price you ask for those photos, she's going to be pissed off because they were supposed to be free in her mind. Correct. But I told her you could buy individual files off of our website and what they ended up doing was buying small four by six prints and then scanning them and using them for things. And at that wow. point I was just like, there's no point in like fighting them on this. It's ridiculous. Jiminy Christmas. I'm sorry, Dustin, that, oh, did you, did you in the, did you just be like, all right, I'm just going to send them those digital files at some point in time because you're just so pissed off by it. No, I never, I never, back down on it uh but what i did do is gave them the digital files with the wedding photos oh, so there you go that's nice so but she claimed in her review she left by then it was like they weren't worth anything because then they had their wedding photos and i was like well technically they were free so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jeez. But anywho, um, so yes, to answer your, the listener's question, I've been in the same debacle and it is a sticky situation to be in, especially if you don't have a paper trail. Um, and the best thing to do is just to uh, honestly, and Steve might disagree, but just to hand them over. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, a negative review on the web or, you know, like negative, feedback from a client is just not not worth it i would say don't hand over all the files i would say um hand over 10 files and tell them they can purchase the rest if they want um 10 files you can let them pick the ones that they like the most or whatever they're not going to need more than 10 for like their guest book or their 
thank yous or whatever they're sending out. But if they really fall in love with the photos, they're going to want them all and they're going to be willing to pay. And so that way you kind of get like the, well, you do have, you know, 10 files you can use or whatever. Um, and I mean, I'm just saying this in the situation of like, I just, I need to do something because they're so unhappy sort of situation that you found yourself in. Um, but man, I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of you for sticking to your guns on that, Dustin. Um, even though it sounds like it was terrible advice and now you're regretting having that review on your website forever or your Facebook, but I'm proud of you, buddy. Yeah. For whatever reason. And I don't understand it like Facebook's algorithm. And I've talked to a couple experts and they don't even understand it because Facebook is supposed to randomize the top two reviews that show up on your Facebook page. And it always shows her review as like one of is those that your top only non five star review. What is that your only non five star review? It's uh, I have it's my one of two non five star reviews that is actually a real review and not just some random ghost of a human that came on left a one or two star review and I don't even know who that person is. Kind of situation. Oh, that person is somebody who wanted you to contact them and offer to pay them money to change that to a five star review. Uh, no, that can't be possible because I've gone through and messaged all those people and mm -hmm. they either reply back. Like, I don't even know who you are. Um, I don't remember ever like being on your page and they're all from around the same date. So I think at some point Facebook, oh, somebody hacked them. No, I think at some point Facebook, uh, sent out like some, like in order to get the review functionality of their new pages, like launched i think they started sending out like hey you were on this page what did you think kind of pop up because i've had that pop up for me like a long time ago for other people's nah, pages Nah, dude you would have seen stories about that all over the the tech news and i know and i've tried to look up that but no one i've haven't been able to find anything yeah because it didn't happen dustin that's why Anyways, thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast with your hosts, Dustin and Steve. You can find us on Instagram at Wedding Photo Hangover and on Twitter at WedPick Hangover because Twitter limits the number of characters in your handle. And last but not least, you can find us on Facebook at Wedding Photo Hangover. If you want to follow Dustin or Steve individually, you can find Dustin on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben. And you can find Steve at Steven Van Alk. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Your head is pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being is aching for the sweet embrace of death. That's right. Next Sunday, after you shoot another wedding, Steve won't be, though. Are you, Dustin? Yep. We have a couple more weddings left this year, my friend. Sorry to cut you off. It's just too good not to. Um, so. Have you been watching Stranger Things? This is after show now. After show. Is yeah. that like a new thing? New format? Uh, a lot of other podcasts I listen to do an after show. They like uh, have their little theme song play them out or their like credits or whatever. And then they have like more conversation about unrelated things. And I figure Stranger Things is unrelated. So, you know. Uh, I would love to talk about Stranger Things, but I've never seen it. So. Oh my gosh, Dustin, you're missing out. It's a good, it's, good show. It's one of those that I wanted to watch. Uh, it's been on my iPad for about a year. I, oh, I know. I got it for when we went to Africa. Dude, I totally would have watched that with you on the plane, in the room, anywhere. And, and, you, and you had said, I just watched it. And so yeah, we never so watched good. it. And then I kind of forgot about it. And it just kind of one of those that just sat on my iPad. And, and instead I made you watch Blade Runner when we were in Africa. Yeah. So I had Stranger Th Things kind of just always on the back burner as that go-to show. And now everyone's going crazy about Stranger Things too, And I'm kind of like, shit, I, I need to get in. I need to get this watched. Jen's in that same boat. She uh, she didn't watch season one because, like me, she's not super keen on horror stuff. Um, See, but I so was told it's not as much horror it. as it is sci-fi. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, it's sci-fi with that's, a horror element. That's what I thought too. That it was like more of a scary type show, and and I was trying to remember back because it's it's a remake, right? It's a reboot from like an old sci-fi show. I don't think so. Um, I'm pretty, but, pretty sure. 
there's a bunch of kids that are in this storyline and Jen um Jen was not sure if they were going to kill one of the kids and she she can't watch a show if they kill a kid or not, you know? Uh if there's like that See either kill there. all the kids or none at all. Uh no, no. Kill all the kids <laughs> would be another thing she won't watch. She just if if there's like a mystery of like is the kid dead or not, she doesn't want to watch it and if the kid dies, she doesn't want to watch it. So she just opted not to watch Stranger Things. Um because she didn't know what the end was going to be. And now everybody's talking about the new season and she wants to uh, watch it, she said. Yeah, it's definitely on my list. Uh, I thought I would watch some of season one uh, last night, but unfortunately it has since expired as of yesterday on my iPad. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to, as soon as I get off with you, I'm going to renew the Netflix lease on that and hopefully watch some of it this week very cool but i'm so far behind on wedding photo stuff i oh dustin before we go i gotta tell you something the wedding jen and i shot this weekend um this last weekend after i was done being sick you know and how did you phrase it pee pooping no 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 it's not how i phrased it your wife phrased it before you got on tonight (laughs) as you were peeing blood out your butthole (laughs) that's pretty funny um so at the end of the night uh jen and i always say goodbye to the bride and the groom Mm, and shouldn't do um, that that's a mistake when we do this i'm a i'm a handshake guy i'm not a hug guy and the um the bride went in for the hug which it happens a lot and i just i roll with it dude because you know you gotta roll um and the bride gave me a hug and she touched her cheek to my cheek while giving me the hug it was the most intimate hug (laughs) i've ever received from a bride (laughs) okay Have you ever had that, buddy? Uh, Little cheek touch? I don't know. You and I have different personality types. Um, So I'm always the one that goes in for the hug. I mean, it could be the very first time I'm meeting the groom at the engagement session, and I'm always going in for the hug before we even start shooting, just to set the tone of where we're going with this. And being that I, I was a photographer before Corinne came along, I would always pose up on the groom on like what I wanted Mm -hmm. the girl to do. And so they're very comfortable with me, both the bride and groom. So by the time that wedding's over, they're practically making out with me. Uh, Dustin, that is the most upsetting thing I've ever heard you say. (laughs) Um, So real talk though, have you ever had a bride or a groom when they give you a hug, uh, touch their cheek to your cheek i would have to experience it like if corinne was awake right now i would i would hug her just so i could feel what that feels like in the room with you so that i could do it to you right now so your heads she would have to be tall yeah dude she was tall and then she would like her cheek like she like rested her face against yours no just like a pressed like a just pressed her cheek to my cheek while we were hugging for like a few seconds. Was she looking for like one of those like European side kisses? Like one of those little. No, not at all, dude. No, it was actually, it was like the, uh, it was, it was like, I just felt like afterwards, like after I got over the initial awkward shock that I always experience when I embrace somebody, um, I was like, wow, that felt like very intimate but not like not like sexual intimate like like that she considered me a dear friend and i was like that was like like i, I felt changed dustin i felt like like maybe you'll start caring about your clients kind of change <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that people could treat people with respect and dignity and you know still still want to like give them like an intimate friend hug and then the groom gave you the same hug no, no, the groom, the groom gave me the uh, the strongest handshake I've ever experienced in my life. Because he just witnessed his wife no. <laughs> no. embrace no. you he, in a way he, that she's was, never embraced him. He was just him. very, he was very, very ripped. He was a very, I mean, uh, he was a very attractive groom, very, uh, very well, well built as far as muscles go. So, 
but not he, uh, but he's not great he's in the hug strong. department and so that's oh, no he gave jen a hug and did he touch uh, his cheek to jen's cheek mm, i don't know dude i would have to ask her i don't think she would have minded if that happened she she's uh she's not weird about touch so that's only you that's only you yeah i'm weird about touch yeah oh i'm so weird about touch dude i i don't uh I mean, I make exceptions for brides and grooms. I will hug them, but I am not like, I'm not a hugger. I don't go in for hugs. Uh, it's one of the things Jen routinely complains about in our marriage. So I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a touchy feely, cuddly sort of person. Mm, see, I mean, you're talking to someone who literally had a bride feed him cake at a wedding a few weeks ago. Oh my ago. gosh, you're finally going to talk about that? How did that happen? Oh my gosh, my battery on my recorder here is about to die. So, oh. Uh, <laughs> no, it was just this weird thing. So I always, I, I, as a wedding photographer, you have kind of your your shtick, if you will, your little your little can of one-liners that you bring with you uh, that you kind of built up over the years, or at least I do. And one of those, no, dude, I'm, I'm that just all <laughs> fresh raw material every time, dude. Just popping straight off the noggin. Typically, it is for me, but there is a handful that I bring that, for whatever reason, I think they're just grade A quality, and I need to use them at every wedding. And one of them is after they cut the cake, and they have their little, you know, push it in their face or don't push it in their face, and their little kissy moment. Um, I you always try to get in on that kiss. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always, I always say to them, "Okay, now it's time to cut a piece for everybody." And they always look at me like, "Oh crap!" Because it's always one thing that no bride and groom has ever pre-thought about when they're like planning their wedding is who cuts this cake after everything is said and done. They just assume that some magical cake fairies come down and cut their cake. No, most brides and grooms know somebody's cutting it. And so I always see that like sort of like you know confused, like bewildered look on their face, and it just brings me so much joy. But wow, you are so <laughs> crappy to your clients. You're and then I jerk. always, I always, I take them down and then I bring them right back up because then I say, oh, don't worry about it, guys. We'll find someone to cut your cake. And then, or, so that's one line I use, okay? This particular wedding that Steve was so kind enough to post a photo on Instagram. You shared the photo Steve, with Steve, me this is my in Dropbox time. Steve, so Steven, I could post Steven, it. Steven, I'm talking here. There's like 200 photos in our shared Dropbox folder Steve. that Dustin has sent to me so that I will post Steve. them to the wedding Steve. photo hangover. Steve. And I just parse through looking for the best ones. Yeah. Anyways, um, so the other line I use from time to time based on the couple um is as soon as they do the you know the whole cake cutting shenanigans i say now if you could go ahead and cut me a piece with a lot of icing i really like you know a corner piece and so <laughs> this particular couple so i i said that it sometimes gets a laugh sometimes doesn't um the groom then reached across with a piece of the cake he still had and fed it to me and I was like so taken aback, I just kind of leaned in for it. And then Corinne, <laughs> my wife, who was photographing the cake cutting alongside me, was like, oh my gosh, I didn't get a picture of that. That's would have been so funny. And the groom had already walked away and the bride was still standing there. And she's like, oh, I'll feed Dustin a piece of cake so you can get a picture of it. And then I'm like, uh, and we're at a venue where the cake is cutting ceremony is happening in the middle of where everyone is sitting for dinner and she does it and I'm just like beat red like while well, the bride is feeding me this piece of cake <laughs> and and of course the bride's like oh did you get the picture and do we need to do it again I'm like no no we are good like that is <laughs> that is a line I never thought would I would cross and here we are on the other side and I'm okay yeah you survived. Oh, and speaking of surviving, um, we actually got enough likes and comments on the feed, didn't we, Dustin? You, you're gonna jump in Niagara Falls now. Uh, yeah, I just have to get my suit on. And by suit, he means speedo. It's like a little man thong. It's called a banana hammock, Steve. Get it right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it is. Buddy. It's more like an eggplant hammock because let's be honest. Well, uh. I'm going to go, but you guys can look for that uh, Instagram live story of just Dustin. Justin. 
<laughs> Do I even know your name anymore? <laughs> Dustin <laughs> jumping off the falls. It's okay, so, uh, Vivian. Be on the lookout for that. Well, I uh, hope I see you tomorrow. I hope you survive. I, I do too, Steve. All right, I got to get back to work. Love you, bye. His audio and his video just cut out, folks. Uh, he's going where few people have ever gone before, and um, all we can do is salute him and wish him well on his way. Speaking of sleeping with Dustin, go.